this is page um, page six sixty seven. Number fifteen. Find the x and y intercepts. Intercepts, we think factoring, this is why. And this factors really nicely, right? Take an x out. So, what are my x intercepts? Cool. Right? Zero and seven. Cool. Y intercept, what do I do? I actually already found it, to tell you honestly. There could only, if I have a function, how many y intercepts could there possibly be? At most, right? There might be none, right? Uh, square roots of function may start there and go there, and there's no y-intercepts. Why can there be only one y-intercept? Why can't there be two? Then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. It can't be a function. And I said it's a function, right? So I've already found the y-intercept. I found it happens to be the same as one of the x-intercepts. So I should expect to get zero. Of course, to find the y-intercept, to make x zero, to make x zero, I get zero. So whenever it goes to the origin, that does double duty. That's an x and a y-intercept. If it's a function, it's the only y-intercept. It's kind of nice. Okay, maybe. It should make sense. If, if, if to find the y-intercept, I plug something in for x, well, every x can only have one output. Every input can only have one output. Therefore, that's why there can only be one y-intercept. Okay, cool. It's weird when you get to these higher level ideas and you give what actually I didn't want to say this, but that's actually a really nice problem. But what's weird is when you have all this other crap in your head, the easy stuff looks hard. Again, mm -hmm. right? You're like, oh, whoa, because you're thinking about b over 2a crap, and you're thinking about completing the square and all that stuff, and this is really a nice problem. Yeah. Any other specific questions? Or? This is page 734. Okay. Number 110, this is section 93. So 110 says, is it true that 2 equals <coughs> b to the log base b of 2? And this is actually kind of like um, the, the official thing is, you should be able to answer this question. But when you look at that, it's like, holy crap. What the hell is going on here? Um, what do you think about that? So why do you think it does? I think base log base 2 kind of cancels itself out. The log base B? Tell me this real quick, a little side note. Just side note. How are these two functions related? f of x equals cube root, and g of x equals x cubed. How are those two, what would you say, how are they related? They're the inverse of each other. I love it, right? They're the inverse of each other. One is the inverse of the other one, right? How are these two functions, now obviously, you know the answer before I even write them down, but think about what you're saying then. How are these two functions related? They're, yeah. They're inverses of each other, right? Right? Isn't that how we developed log? Didn't we look at the op the inverse of this to come up with the log? Don't they undo each other? 3 squared is 9, but log base 3 of 9 is 2. It brings back what the input was from the other one. They are inverses of each other. Cool? So what's the inverse of 7 to the x? <coughs> log base. 
Seven. Seven. What's the base here? Seven. seven. Isn't that cool? The base is seven, so the base is seven. <coughs> They're inverses of each other. If I put a two in there, what do I get? So if I do f of 2, what do I get? 7 squared is? 49. 49. If I put a 49 in here, oh. what's log base 7 of 49? What do you think to yourself? 2. Yeah, it's 2. Why? Because you, when you see a logarithm, you think to yourself, what power do I need to put on this base to make it what's in there? So didn't the output of this when I input in here, come back to what I input in the first place? Isn't that what inverse functions do? They take the output of one and bring it back to what the input was. It undoes what the other one did. So what do, uh, if I had cube root of, of 7 cubed, what's that? 7. 7. seven. Why? Because these cancel. Yeah. All right, well, if I had b to the log base b of 2, what do these two do? Cancel. What are you left with? Two. All right, there you go. That's how you explain it. It's almost too easy. They're inverses. So they kill each other. So what's left? What's a left alive? Right? Why is a 7 left here? Because it's the only thing left alive. Why is a 2 left here? Because it's the only thing left alive. Let me try this other way. Let me see. Does everybody understand that to a point at least? I mean, at sum into a power and log base that, they are inverses of each other. What do inverse functions do to each other? They cancel each other. We've known that forever. That's how we solve equations. We do the opposite. So these kill each other, leaving you with two. So the b cancels the log base. Exactly. Okay. Just like the cube cancels the cube root. It's exactly the same. It just looks funky because we're not used to this notation. But if we weren't used to this notation, that would look just as funky. Yeah? So that answer would be well, they're saying, is it true that this equals this? Yes. Oh. Why? Because that does equal two. Yeah. Cool. Let me try this alternate explanation. If you understand that, awesome. Keep that. This one's a little bit funkier. Tell me again what's log base uh, 4 of uh, 64. What's that? Why? Why is it? Be careful now. Yeah, because it takes 4 to the third power to make 64. That's why the answer is 3, right? So what does this represent? What does that represent? What would the answer have to be? The number that when I do what with it, what happens? So again, let me, let me get you to come here with me. Why did you say this is 3? Because that's the number I have to raise 4 to to get 64. So this would have to be the number that when I raise B to it, I would get 2. So what happens when I raise B to it? If I just said this represents the number that I have to raise B to to get 2, what do I get when I raise B to it? I get freaking 2. Isn't that what I just said? That's the way that makes a little less sense. I understand. Some of you guys are looking at me like, I was with you, and then suddenly you turned to Greek for some reason. Why I keep talking English, Joe? You guys are all with me here. I know. I can almost feel it. You told me this is three, and can everybody tell that's three? If you can't, come see me, please. Right? The question's pretty simple to keep in your brain. It's all about knowing what symbols ask you, right? The symbols ask me, what power does this guy need to become this? So that's what that represents. That's also known as three. So what does that represent? The number that when I raise b to it, I get 2. Isn't that what that represents? So it's almost silly. What do I get then when I raise b to it? Well, the stupid thing tells me I get 2. So it's another way to look at it. So what's the better way to look at it? This way. <laughs> because it's easy. But it's kind of cool to think about it the other way, too. That means you really understand logarithms if you get that. If you don't quite get that, it's OK. It's a little freaky. It's OK. You get the same damn answer both ways, right? so it don't matter. So what's uh, 11 to the log base 11 of pi? Pi. Pi, because these cancel, right? What's log base pi of pi to the square root of 2? Square root of 2. Why? Because these cancel. OK, right? 
We're just not used to this symbol. It looks kind of freaky, but it's just like the cube killing the cube root. The log kills the base pi to a power. The base 11 to a power kills the log base 11. They, they kill each other because they're opposite functions. OK, cool. Maybe. And it's all, it's really all a question of getting used to the symbol, I think. I mean, the idea is actually pretty straightforward. If I ask you what power do I have to raise 2 to to get 16, you can tell me what. What power do I raise 2 to to get 16? So it's just realizing that this is the same stupid question. It's just getting used to how math people put our questions together. We don't like a lot of words. We want bang. Uh, let's see. So, I promise to do this. Unless there's no other, is there any other questions? I'm going to kind of do a quick review, 8, 9, and catch us back up to where we are. And then we're going to keep going for a bit, and then we'll do the review. inequality problems. I've got to look at it differently than I ever have. I can't make cases because there's way too many freaking cases. I want to break it down and see when is it zero. That's when it might change sign. That's the whole idea. So how do I factor the bottom there? And that would be an x squared minus 16, right? So x plus 4x minus 4. All right, cool. Let's try to get there. So your x so where is it zero? No, where is it zero? No, where is it zero? No, that's where it's undefined. Let me be more specific. Where is it zero? Negative seven. When it's negative seven, you get zero divided by something, that's zero. Where is it undefined? All right, negative four. Four and zero. The reason we find those locations is because the question this is asking, I might try to teach an entire class that way. What, what question this is asking? The question this is asking is when is this function zero or positive? <coughs> right? Well, it's the only time it could change sign from negative to positive is when it goes through zero or when it's undefined because it might slam up against the wall and then slam down against the other wall there. So it changes sign. It's positive on one side and negative on the other side, right? So those are the only places where it could change sign around them possibly. All right. Uh, again, the shortcut comes in really handy. We'll do kind of half and half here. Um, so if I pick uh, 1, what's the sign of this? It'll be, it'll be positive divided by positive, positive, negative. So it's negative in there, right? Does everybody see what I'm doing when I do that? All I'm doing, and again, what's this thing asking? It's saying, when is this? positive. So I am curious now about finding where it's negative and where it's positive, and then I can just pull the places where it's positive and say, there, there's the answer right there. So I've established the places where it might <coughs> change sign. And again, I especially want you guys to understand, if it's negative, if it's right now, if it's negative, what's the only way it could change sign to become positive? Two ways, really. 
it could either go through the x-axis and then it would show up. Then it would be a zero, wouldn't it? It has to go through the x-axis or it has to do something like this. Right, then it change sign. On this side of this, it's, it's negative. On the other side of this, it's positive. Right? That's the whole idea. So if I know at 1, at 1, what's the, in fact, let's go ahead and get the number. Why not? So at 1, do I get 8 divided by 1 times 5 times negative 3? I get negative 8 over 15, right? If you want to get the number, great. Does the number care, matter? Do I care about the No, I don't care. I just want to know what the sign is. So again, that's why sometimes I put in, like over here, I put in 18 billion. Positive, 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 positive. See, I don't care about the freaking number. I just care, is it positive or negative? Is it, is it above the x-axis or below the x-axis? That's all I care about. If you want to get the number, feel free. I don't care. So it's negative in here. We just did 18 billion. And I got positive, 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 positive. So it's positive. If we do negative 2, we get positive over negative, because x is negative 2. Positive. Negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative. Negative, negative can't even get positive. I used to say positive too many times. Positive, positive. It's not an easy word to say over and over. Do you guys see, though, the shortcut happening already? All the powers are first power, odd powers. It should change sign everywhere. It will change sign everywhere. If one of them would have been squared or fourth power, it would have been the same sign on both sides. You should forget the shortcut. Who cares? Just plug numbers in, right? It's not that huge of a shortcut, really, unless there were like 80 zeros. Then the shortcut kicks ass. Okay, so the question is, how are you writing the answer? All right. Negative infinity. That's the next step. Is it okay. how are we feeling up to this point? I have a question. Yes. For the negative 2? Yeah. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5. Okay. Negative so 2. So it's positive. So then the negative 2 minus X is four. negative 2. Uh-huh. Negative uh, 2 plus 4 is positive. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative. Negative times negative is positive. Okay. And the other positives are just sitting there, right? So it really comes down to how many negatives do you have overall. That's what really determines it. Okay. So now, what the hell is the answer? Could you circle the answer on this number line? Well, Could you at least do that? Which parts do I not want to include? The All the negatives. Well, so it must be this year and this year and this year, right? Just being careful, obviously, when I write it, to not include where it's undefined. Can I include where it's zero? Yes. Yeah, because it says equal to zero, right? Equal to zero. Okay. So what's this tell me? This is going to be? Negative infinity to seven. Negative cool. seven. Cool. Negative infinity to negative seven. Do I include it? Yes. Yes. Or? Negative four to zero. Negative four to zero, not including either one because it makes it freak out. Or? Uh, four included. Not including four because yeah. it makes it freak oh, out. Oh, it's undefined though. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, ah. um, <coughs> no. So again, the interesting thing. There are many interesting things here. But I could draw a really rough sketch now. Really stupid rough. Uh, it's positive, then it becomes, here's like the x-axis, then it becomes negative, right? Then it's undefined, so there must be like an asymptote here. And then it's positive. Then it's undefined again. So actually you must do this kind of thing. And then it's negative. So it's positive in between here, right? There's an asymptote here because it's what's undefined. So it must stay positive. Then it's negative. Then there's another freaking asymptote. It's still negative all the way through here, and then all of a sudden it's positive. So if you graph this thing, that would be interesting. If you Plug this into your calculator correctly. You will get basically that picture. You should try it. Try it out at home. <laughs>
amaze or annoy your friends. Section 8 9, really in a nutshell. There's some without any bottoms. That's kind of nice. So there's no one to find. If they are and find, just pull the U up there. I love it. So it just reminds you, don't use me. Right? I make it freak out. So don't use me. Uh, then we got the Section 9 1, which, if you don't like functions, was your worst nightmare realized? Yes. Because we came back and focused on functions again. And it's where we had, for example, the very first thing, only those of you who are really averse to functions should really not like this here. So what have I said? What's uh, G composed with F of X? Yeah, so the first thing you rewrite it as G of F of x. Right, that's what that symbol means. It's like a little shorthand for of. So g of, what's f? It's this thing. So where am I going to put this? So I've got to plug this into the g function, right? So what's the g function do? It takes 3 and divides it by 7 times the mess that I have in here. Right? Functions are really, really, really single-minded things. Whatever the hell is in here goes in place of the x in the definition. g of something is 3 over 7 times something. g of something is 3 over 7 times something. I mean, it's, it's got to have the same form, the same idea. Right? And the only thing I can really do here is to bring the 7 through, right? Just to clean up a little bit. I, I could factor the bottom, but is there really a purpose? No. There's nothing we cancel, right? This is where we start to revert back to like the 3 canceling somehow magically. Don't do that. You know better. All right, so you guys do this. What's uh, f of g of x? You get done with that, why don't you blow your own mind and do G of G of X? Huh? The Are gog. Killing me. Right. Okay. So if you're able to tell me you're killing me, I'm killing you. You're not dead yet. Uh -huh. You're funny, Joe. Funny, funny news. <laughs> go very far with this, by the way. Don't try to get like an or whatever.
what's it f function do to whatever I put in there? It puts it, it squares it, and then multiplies three by. It. You see how it's just a brute force thing? I mean, first step is no thought. Just put it, there, put it there, put it there. Next step, clean it up. So what do you get here? Nine over nine over forty-nine. Nine over Everything's got to get squared, right? Minus nine over seven. And if you wanted to, you can get like that on there. Right, that's fine. Uh, what's the f function tell me to do to something? Yeah. I mean, do you see how you can kind of step back and just say, what's the f function tell me to do to anything? Square it and then multiply three times and subtract. Square it, three times it, subtract. I mean, see, so I've got everything the f function tells me to do to that specific thing right then. And again, if you wanted to, what would the LCD be? Yeah, you have to multiply this by 7x. 9 minus 63x over 49. If you wanted to, I don't care. You can stop either place. I don't care. Yeah? For the second part of that one, the the g function, it says 3 over 7 times the thing I'm putting into it, right? I'm putting itself in there. So what's the first thing that happens there? 7's Seven. cancel. You guys see that? So what's on the bottom now? X. No. 3 over x. And how do you do 3 divided by 3 over x? You multiply by the reciprocal, right? When you may have a fraction within a fraction, rewrite it with the division symbol because then you, your brain attacks it and so multiply by the reciprocal. It knows what to do with it then, right? And what's that? X. So what's true about G and itself? G is, what happens when I plug a function into one and it comes out with X? That means they effectively killed each other, right? It's own inverse. G is its own inverse. inverse. In fact, most, uh, Functions that are their own inverses are going to be one over x type of deals. That's if you think about it for a second. That's a little bit funky. But what I want you to realize is, um, here's what one over x looks like. And remember, what's an inverse function have to do related to this line? Do you remember? When I graph them, how should they be related to that line? They should be reflections. So if I reflect this function across that line, doesn't it just become itself, right? So anything that already is symmetric to that line will be its own inverse. It's a little funkadelic, right? Does it really matter? Do you have to know beforehand that it is? No. You just do the work and you go, oh shit, I got x. It means they must be inverses of each other. But I plugged itself, oh, it's inverse of itself. That happens, right? And think about it, what does this function really say if I had just 1 over x? What's it really say? If I put a 7 in there, it says flip it. Right? Isn't that what it says? g of 7 would be 1 7. So if I did it again, wouldn't it say flip it again? Wouldn't it become 7 again? So the function that says flip it is, of course, its own inverse, because how do you undo a flip? You flip it again. Right? So it's not really something unexpected if you think about it. Any function that says flip is its own inverse. Let's add some extra, like, minus crap in the wood thing. Okay, Jeff. So that's section 9-1. Um, just to make sure you guys get the more abstract stuff here. What is H? of h inverse of 14.2. You know what h is? No, but I don't care. What's h of h inverse of 14.2? 14.2. 14.2. 
14.2. Because don't, what do these two do? Cancel. Just like we saw with B and log base B or cube root and cube. All this is saying is, in general, any function and its opposite, its inverse, will cancel. We know that, right? I don't have to know what the hell H is. I just know that its inverse exists. Wait, 14 points. Yeah. Does it look like H uh, times 1 over H? No, no, no. Careful. I know that seems to do the right thing. But H inverse of X is not 1 over H. Definitely not. That's not enough. It's really too bad that that looks like, of course, a negative power, so you may think flip. All that means is the opposite of H. I wish they would have used like a O, but that actually has other meaning. Too bad. That would make it like the opposite of H. Or like I for inverse of H. That would have been nice because that actually has no meaning really. It looks like to an ith power with a complex, but you know, we could deal with that better than that. We think, oh, just flip it. So if I have h of x equals 5x, the inverse is not 1 over 5x. You don't just flip it. In fact, what is the inverse of a function that multiplies by 5? A function that. You could do it, Jeff. No, Jeff. There. Function that multiplies by 5, its inverse should be one that divides the thing by 5, right? So it's not the reciprocal then. That doesn't make any sense. It can't be that. Okay, cool. All right, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, 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 um. And then section 9 2 is all about exponential functions. We're almost caught up again here. Is 10 going to be on the final? No, 10 won't be on the final. But for those of you going to pre-calculus, I desperately have to at least show you a preview of that. You will go into depth in pre-calc. They'll assume you've seen it before, but they're going to go into depth on the how to work it. But you need to at least see it here. Yeah. So, I'll, yeah, we'll see it. Um, so this is a little funky, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen yet like a fraction to a power like this uh, in this form. So if I want to, I can certainly make a xy table. Some of you guys might realize there's a way to rewrite that. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I always plug in some negatives. Zero and some positives. That's where I start. Because the mistake a lot of people make is they only throw in positives and they miss like a turning point or they miss some other key feature. So what's one half to the negative two power? Yeah, one half. A negative power means flip. Two squared is four. So what's one half to the negative one power? Two, just flip it, right? One half flipped is two. Of course, anything to the zero power is one. One half to the first power, incredibly enough, is a half. One half squared, one fourth. I like it. Cool. There we go. So this guy is kind of funky. Um, So negative 2, it was 4. And negative 1, it's 2. 0, it's 1. 1, it's 1 half. 2, it's 1 fourth. So it looks like an exponential that's been what? Because I don't know if you guys remember, uh, just a regular exponential would look like this, right? So what's kind of happened to our regular exponential? It's been, who can tell me? Here's a regular exponential. Here's what we just got. Uh, what's that word? Flipped, right? Yeah. It's not inverse, be careful. It's not inverse because it didn't flip it around the y plus x. I flipped it around the, the y axis, right? Do you actually have to know that? Try to No, we got it from the points, but we can see this. So again, if I ask you to graph something, unless I say graph 
using translations, which we'll do here right now. Unless I say that, you can certainly use an XY table. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Um, notice real quick, what's another way to write one half to the X? What's one half if I write it two to what power? What's one half? Two to the, what did I do to two to get one half? It's two to the negative one. Isn't that two to the negative X then? Yeah. Right? So all my inputs for x become the opposite of them, the negative of them, right? That's why it makes sense that it would flip. So when, normally I would put in a 2 and I get 4. Well, now I put a 2 in and I get 1 fourth because it's been, what I get back here has been flipped over there. All my positive x values now give me what I used to get on the negative side, right? If you don't quite get that, it's okay. That's, that's a reflection um, that you'll talk more about in pre-calc if you take it. Some of you guys are very worried. But again, I'm not going to do any more translations to you than the ones we talked about. The ones that move left and right, the ones that move up and down. But it's kind of interesting to see that it should look like the 2 to the x has just been reflected. Okay. So how would you graph this using translation? I'll do it on top of this here. What shifts can you see? What what how does this thing shift? Okay, up to over one. So to the right one, right? Not back one, but right one. So there's the two shifts I have to make. It was right one and up to. So if I say graph by translation, what I mean is graph the base function without all the translation, without the minus one, without the plus two, and now just move the points, right? This point would have to move, let's do this point. <laughs> this point would have to move right one, up two, right? This point, right one, up two. Right one, up two, right one, up two, and so forth, right? You guys see that? See that? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Good enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now the asymptote has moved up to with everything else. Do you guys see that? And this is how we got to that form for parabolas. We said, where would the vertex move? That's, how we, that's why we know when I see x minus 2 squared plus 3, the vertex is 2, 3. Because it would move over 2, up 3. So when I see this, I know I just take everything move it over 1, up 2. That's exactly what I just did. To check yourself, when I plug a 0 into that new function, what should I get out? When I plug a 0 in, what should I get out? So you can always check yourself. You move a graph over, it's when you graph something, you're saying all the points on that graph should work here. So when you plug a zero in, one half to the negative one is one half flipped, which is two, plus two is four. Yay. All right, at least that one point's good, which makes me feel pretty good about the whole thing. And we did some like this. We did some like uh, this here. I don't know if you remember. Um, this is a while back, but if I have a regular square root function, then it goes 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. Square root of 4 is 2, right? So here's the regular square root function before I move it anywhere. Where does it want to move? It's got to move. What's this do to it? It makes it go back to. Uh, down one. Down one. So then I can take every point. This point would go back to, down one. Back to, down one. 
back two, down one. All right, so here it is now. That's what it's trying to do. Oops, I missed one. There you go, Jeff. Well, it's good to do this if you have color pencils to get to this one. I'm not going to ask you to do a lot of this. In fact, I'm probably going to ask you just to do it with the exponentials, because that's where we really focus on it, and that's where the book focuses on it. Uh, but in pre-calculus, trust me, you were doing a ton of these kind of things. Right? With all different functions, with other translations, reflections, and stuff. Yay. Okay. I think that brings us up to speed. Was there anything specific that I left out there? You know, like, that was enough, man. Please tell me you didn't leave anything out. That brings us to 93. Which is where we left off last time. points I do when I graph uh, exponential are negative 1 would go to 1 half, right? 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. And then I fill in my line. So if it was 3, it would be 1 third, 1, 3. Same shape, just a little bit steeper slope. So what does the graph of log base 2 of x look like? How does it have to be related to that graph there? Considering what we know about these functions, how are these functions related? They're inverses of each other. How do the graphs of inverses have to be related? You can, I can take a couple answers here. It's got to be mirror image about y equals x, right? So it should look based like this, right? More specifically, it's got to take every point that this goes through and go through the point where the x and y are switched, right? So this point here is um, negative 1, 1 half, right? So my inverse better go through the point 1 half, negative 1. Are you guys with me? If my function goes to the point negative 1, 1 half, my inverse has got to go through, switch the x and y. It's got to go through 1 half, negative 1. This one goes through uh, 0, 1. So my inverse better go through 1, 0. This one goes through 1, uh, why did I make it 3? That was neat, Jeff. Oh, well, too bad for me. This one goes through 1, 2, right? When you plug a 1 in, you get a 2 out, of course. What should my inverse function do? 2, 1. 2, 1. So it does end up looking like the reflection, see? And look at this. Here the S asymptote is at the x-axis. If I flip that over, it's now the y-axis. You can see that happening right there. Because remember, we did talk about this. What's log base 2 of 0? We did exactly that problem last time. What do I raise 2 to to make it 0? One. One. 2 to the first power is 2. No solution? Good. Undefined. Right? That's why there's an asymptote at 0. 0 doesn't work. It says it right here. Why is there an asymptote here? Because if I raise 2 to a negative a billion, it's, it's not 0. It's just very tiny, right? So there's no way to raise 2 to a power and make it 0. Because 2 to a negative power will be 1 over something. That's not zero ever, right? Same thing that this says. How can I make two to what power zero? No power that I know of. Nothing is defined to do that. That's why there's an asymptote there. Okay. The bigger issue here is um, we're starting to kind of know our graph images, right? We know what a parabola is for x squared. We know what a square root looks like, right? 
Now we know what an exponential looks like, and we know what a logarithm looks like. <laughs> right? Exponential, and it's inverse the logarithm. And we know what that function looks like. Wow, you guys are like, please, dear God. But if I wanted a week to go by quickly, this is the one. Make him lose his voice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, let's just I take mean, the final one on, you know, the first eight chapters, and the nine and ten we'll just have in our head. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds like a perfect idea. All right. I'm open to suggestions, well, we and I quickly throw your suggestion out. <laughs> um, so if I was asked to do this, graph this, what, do you, what would you guys, what do you think you should do? We should. <laughs> Tuck your tail between the legs, yeah. go scurrying away. Absolutely. No, what do you do? What do you do? Leave. What do you do? When you, when you ask to graph something, you kind of have an idea, maybe. You know, Jeff showed us what the hell. In fact, it's still up on the freaking board what a log looks like. But, I, you know, shit, I don't know what the hell to do with that with a specific freaking problem. But what do you do when I give you a function? You're not sure exactly what its graph looks like. You make uh, x, y, table. And you be very smart about what you plug in. I'm not going to plug a freaking 3 in because I don't know what the hell log base 4 of 3 is, right? I don't know what I raise 4 to you to make it 3. Shit, I don't know what the hell that is. But I know what to raise 4 to to make it. One, for example, zero. Zero. I raise it to the zero power, right? Sixteen's okay. It's kind of hard to grasp. So let's stick with maybe four. What I raise four to to make it four? One. First power. Are you guys kind of with me here, right? I'm not going to throw a three in because it's just like if I had a square root function. I'm not going to throw a three in. Can I graph that? No. Square root of three? No. I'm going to throw a four. I'm going to throw a nine in. Smart stuff. Stuff that I know is going to come out with a whole number. So here I want stuff that is. <laughs> powers of 4, right? 4 to power. So, so if I put it in 16, sure, that gives me a 2. What's an even better one? What, what gives me some negative outputs? Negative 4? No, you can't get that. Zero. No, undefined, remember? 1 fourth, anything that's oh. flipped. Because remember, what is the output of a log? What does a log represent always? What does a log represent? What's the output to a log? Why is log base 4 of 1 equal to 0? Why? Yeah, it's the power that you need on the 4 to make it 1. Cool? So if I look at it and say, how can I make it 1 fourth? Well, how could I use powers to make that happen? Because that's what logs are all about. What power do I need to make it become 1 fourth? Oh, a negative freaking power. And then a negative 1 because I want it to still be 4. I have to flip it. That's that's the power that will do that. And one sixteenth, if you want to go crazy, that would be what? Flip it, square it, right? Because you guys might notice, you do not have a log base four button on your calculator. Somebody asked me the other day, excellent question, and I have a really quick answer. No, you ain't got that. <laughs> nah, nah. Right? So you, you currently can't even graph this damn thing in the y1 equals something. You don't have anything to put in there. Not yet. Too bad. you got to do it by hand. Ah. So let's see what we get. I'm so, <laughs> I'm such a nice guy. Let's see. So at uh, 1, it was 0. At 4, it's 1. At one fourth, it's negative one. So here's half. Here's a fourth in negative one. One sixteenth is negative two. And that's just kind of reinforcing the idea. There's an asymptote there, right? So here's my. Here's what it looks like. Now. find something useful, yeah. Uh, all right, so real quick, can you tell me what does this thing do as it keeps as I keep getting bigger and bigger x's? Does this flatten out? What does this do? What do you think this does here? 
Does it flatten out? Does it turn around and come back down? No, it keeps going to infinity, right? Really slowly, crazy slow. Okay. All right, blah, 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 blah. And we talked about this last time. Um, what is a log sitting there by itself? Which is a funny phrase to hear in a math class, but what does a log sitting by itself mean? Like this, log 100. What's the base? Yeah. Understood. Yeah. yeah. Right? If there is no number with the log, it's just like a square root, like a radical without a number. It's understood to be a square root. That's the most used root. The most used log is base 10 because our number system is with that. Right, because we have 10 fingers. Right, so that's why this was left on. What is log of 100 then? What do you think to yourself? What do I need to raise 10 to to make 100? 2. 10 squares is 100, right? Can you guys all see your log button on your calculators? Should be a log, and I can't remember, underneath or above it, there's an ln, which is nifty. That's a natural log. See, a really stupid math <coughs> jokes about natural log cabins and stuff. What's right above the log button? What's up here? Right above it. No, no, I mean, not the next button up. Right above it. 10 to the x. Why do you think those are together? Because how are they? Yeah, they're inverses of each other. They like to put a function and then it's inverse right above. Like the x squared button, what's right above that? Square root, right? Which is sort of an inverse if you use the right inputs. But oh well. Okay, maybe, maybe. I always go one sentence too far, I think. Oh. Shit. Um, so let's see what we have to do in here. There's, so if you got a graph, you can graph it just like this. So if I had log base three, I would have put stuff in here like one, three, nine, one third, Right, things based on three, obviously. You just got to be smart about what you put in. Um, there's a whole graphing section. There's a whole simplify section, which is just like this, just like the ones we keep doing a billion of. Let's log base seven of one forty ninth. Like that. Good, and you break it down. I got to flip it, and then seven forty nine. I got to square it. There you go. Right, that's the power you need on that to make it one forty ninth. Whole section like that. There's a section where they ask you to use your graphing calculator to figure out what, like, um, can somebody give me an estimate for this log of uh, 89? Considering a log of 100 is 2, what would you guess that to be? 1.9, 1 1.8, something. What is it? Do log 89. Let's see if you guys can find that button and do it. 1.9. 1.9. Four, five, blah, 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 blah. Four, nine. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So what do you get when you raise 10 to that number on your screen? You get 89. That's what it means, right? It's just rewriting it. 10 to this power has to be this. Cool. I like it. So there's a whole section like that. Um, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, not too bad. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and the last little thing, I think we did this a little bit last time. Um, what is 8 to the 1 third? 2, right? Because it's a cube root of 8. How does this look logarithmically? Log base what? 2. Careful. Okay. What is the base? What would you say the base is? Eight. eight. I think that's raised to power, right? Eight. So log base eight to the number two, two. of two equals two. right. You can always check yourself. Eight to the one third equals two. You see, you can see it, right? Eight to the one third is two. The answer has always got to be the power. The input's always got to be what the output was. Because again, these are inverse functions, aren't they? So the output is the input. The power, I know the logs are power, so the power better be over there, and the base better be the base. So it kind of constricts your ability what to put where. So how would you do this? Rewrite this one for me. X to the m equals 
uh, T. <coughs> what does that look like? There's a logarithm. Don't say it out loud. Log X. Don't say it out loud. Definite thing. So, so the base is x, right? The base is obviously x. What's got to go over here is the power, right? The output of a log must be a power, and the only place left for the freaking t is there. The output becomes the input. So those both represent the exact same idea. Like whatever you say, John. All right, so let's do this. Let's actually, um, I, I definitely want to leave enough time at the end for review. But I have a certain, I have a certain amount into this section I want to, into this chapter that I want to get today. So let's see if I can make this work. You guys try these problems, page 734. Anybody not get the answer key for the practice test? Key? 